Hey everyone, it's Bill here again. Now in today's tutorial, I've got three piano exercises for you that are designed to be fun and satisfying and which target particular skill areas that adult piano learners, and especially those of you who are self-teaching, tend to struggle with. Now there is some score to read in this tutorial, but don't worry if your reading skills are a little shaky or if you're just starting out, because I'm gonna be demonstrating everything really, really clearly. Now this is important, there's also a free 10 page PDF that accompanies this tutorial. It is actually free, okay? You don't have to sign up, you don't have to give me your email address. There's just a Google Drive link down in the description text underneath the video, plus a contact link if you have any problems downloading it. If you struggle to download that PDF for any reason, just drop me a message using the contact link and I will help you out. By the way, in that PDF, you'll also find a fourth task, which I'm not gonna cover in the tutorial. I'll talk more about that later, or you can just look at it for yourself in the PDF. Okay, so these tasks and this tutorial are the first installment in a new project I'm running called Exercises, Inventions and Ideas. Basically, every month for the next year and a half or so, I'm going to release an installment of a few tasks like the ones that we're going to look at today. I'm going to run the Exercises, Inventions and Ideas project kind of like the way I ran my Piano Packs project, if you're familiar with that, yeah? So most of the upcoming installments after this one will only be available to my Patreon subscribers for the time being, yeah? This one is totally free, but most of them will be Patreon only. But then in a year or two's time, I'll bundle all the installments up together into a single volume and put them on sale with my other products, just like I did with my Piano Packs. So like I said, this first installment, both the video and the PDF I mentioned are free and open access and they stand and alone, yeah? And I might do another open access one in a few months time. But if you want to access all of the installments of exercises, inventions and ideas as they come out, make sure you're signed up to support me on Patreon, which doesn't cost very much and comes with various other exclusive bits and pieces and benefits. You can find out more over at patreon.com slash billhilton. Okay, so that's how it's all gonna work. Let's get started exploring some exercises, inventions, and ideas. By the way, I've made it easy to find each of the three tasks we're looking at in today's tutorial by marking them as chapters in this video, yeah? So you maybe wanna watch the whole tutorial to start with, but then when you're sat at the piano trying the exercises for yourself and you wanna revisit the tasks, just use the chapter divisions in the red transport bar at the bottom of the video to find the point where each one starts, okay? Okay, let's get going. So task number one is an exercise. It's based on quite a short little movement that I've scored out on page three of the PDF. The score we've got there, by the way, isn't like a whole piece to play from beginning to end. It's just showing you various different ways of playing the exercise in different hands and keys and so on. To start with, let me just play the basic pattern which you can see in the first three bars, the first three measures of the score there. Here we go. again let me count as I'm playing it this time because you'll see that we're for some of the notes especially at the end of the phrase are falling across the beat and we've got that little bit of a rest at the start yeah one two three four one two three four one two off four and again one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, off, four. Don't worry if you can't count and play at the same time because the actual movement is slightly offset in various ways. First of all, there's a swing, so we're not playing those quavers, we're not playing them straight, we're playing them swung as if we were playing jazz or blues. And also at the end of the phrase, that final note comes in ahead of the beat, uh, ahead of the final beat of that second bar. So Counting and playing at the same time, you might find a little bit tricky. Great if you can do it. If you can't do it, just focus on copying the movement as I'm playing it. And try and get that little bit of swing in. Let's try it in the left hand. This starts um, from bar four, measure four in the uh, score. And again. Now the tricky thing to work out here, and I, I talk about this in the uh, in, in the text in the PDF, is exactly how you're going to finger this because I haven't put any fingering suggestions in. One of the challenges here is to find fingerings that work for you. Look at the fingering that I used in the right hand. 
Okay, so I went bomb, 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 bomb. Third on the G. Use my fourth and fifth up there, but then there's a little bit of an awkward leap down to the E flat there. So you might want to think of other ways of doing it. Or you could try starting on your second. Or even sliding down from the E flat to the E with one finger. is just a little bit more unstable. What I want you to do when you are trying your own fingers is to not neglect four and five in either hand. It's really tempting to rely on one, two, and three, okay? But don't neglect those, which is why the one I'm favoring is. Yeah, because it kind of works four and five at the top there. The point of this exercise is to help you for when you're improvising, basically, because um, when often when you're playing jazz, blues, whatever, you kind of have to make up your fingering on the fly. And if you get in the habit of um, choosing efficient fingers kind of automatically, you'll find that makes your improvisation much smoother. As you get a bit more confident, try it hands together. So if you look at bar seven in uh, on page 10, that's what I do. That's why I've got scored out. Or you can try it in different keys. So I've also put it there in F. There's quite a lot of fun you can have with this. As you get more confident, you can try jumping between octaves. Going out of shot here. Yeah, don't worry too much about uh, holding that um, th th the final note of each phrase for its full length, by the way. You know, by all means, chop that off in the interest of jumping around. You could even use it to kind of improvise a, a, a kind of semi-12 bar blues type thing. Now, task number two is an invention. This is the second type of task that I'm including in the Exercises, Inventions and Ideas project. By the way, like I said in the introduction, if you look in the PDF at the end of it on pages nine and ten, you'll also see that I've included an idea task. That's the third type of task. But that's more kind of thinky, thinky, more based around practice strategies and things like that. And there's nothing practical in there to demonstrate today. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you to discover that for yourself, though I think you will find it really 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 useful i'm saying a lot of really relevant stuff about being an adult piano learner in there so do check that out but the invention tasks like the one we're about to look at are very very practical they're little pieces and little bits of pieces that will help you to develop particular techniques on the piano keyboard but in a way that's kind of maybe a little bit more creative and a little bit more involved than the flat out very focused exercises this one is really short but like a lot of the inventions that i'm going to be using in the series you can also extend it and start to improvise on it let me just play through the invention i'll just play the eight bars that i've got written we're in four four time and we're in the key of B flat here we go And then we would repeat, but we'll talk about the repeat in a moment or two. Let's just think about the basics that are going on there. One of the challenges here is to play this, but to keep it quietly. So you're really, we're really testing your ability to control your movement on the piano keyboard. It would be really easy to bash this. But I don't want you to bash it. I want you to pull back and play it softly. Yeah. In the left hand, we've got these very simple block chords. Make sure you're playing them nice and smooth and even. Just because they're simple doesn't mean you should neglect them. I'm also using the sustain pedal to stick things together, okay? Typically what I'm doing is just pedaling with the chord changes. So from B flat, I go to C minor and the pedal's coming up, the sustain pedal, the right hand pedal is coming up as I hit the C minor chord, but then going straight back down again. That's just so we're not getting a sort of smear through of all the harmonies running together. 
okay but at the same time it means we've got the pedal sustaining those repeated f's in the right now in the right um, we've got quite a minimalistic thing going on and the thing that I know is going to be controversial in the comments because people are always baffled when I do this but honestly it's a really really standard thing to do is the cycling fingers yeah when you have a repeated note on the piano like that it's always better to play it or usually better to play it with cycling fingers three two one three two one three two one three two one the reason for that is if you do that, first of all, it can get tiring, but it's actually more difficult to play the notes evenly. You end up with, 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 with some, you know, kind of standing out. And that's because there's actually more movement involved. You're lifting the finger, you're putting it down again, lift down, lift down. Whereas if you're doing that, there's always a finger lined up ready to hit the note. It also means you can go quite fast if you need to. not that we're doing that in this exercise. So another little challenge here is to cycle the fingers, but also you need to work in the little top F every now and then. Every now and then one of those comes in. So I've left you to work out the fingers. So I've, I've marked in the first few and then put sim for simile. Do it in the same way throughout. Let me just play it through again a little bit slower just so you can see what I'm doing with the fingers. Here we go. Yeah, so there's a little bit of kind of jiggling around there as I have to have the, the five in a decent position to get up to the F, but try it for yourself. As far as possible, try to make sure that each time you play the lower F, it's with a different finger. If, if you sometimes double up, it's not the end of the world, but that's kind of part of the challenge. So keep it soft, keep it controlled. Maybe um, practice just those first eight bars as they're written a little bit to start with but as you get more confident you can start to repeat it and you'll see that I've put over the final bar over the fi final measure right hand ad lib after the first time that means you can improvise the right hand after the first time that, if that sounds scary don't worry all I'm saying is make up the pattern that you're using so rather than play what's written just decide for yourself when you're going to put in the occasional F at the top I would suggest that what you do at least to start with is just keeping those top F's solitary you could put in multiple ones if you want but it would be a little bit trickier you know so just literally something like this yeah so all I'm doing there is being more random about when that top F is coming in basically so play around with that have a go at making it as musical as you can. It's a really simple piece, but there are multiple things to challenge you there. There's the softness, there's the expression. Remember, we're always being as expressive as we can. There's the pedaling, there's the evenness of the chords, and the, there are those cycling fingers. Yeah, so there's quite a lot in that invention to dig into. And finally, for today's tutorial, we have task three, which is another exercise, and it's one that's going to help you improve your fluency and confidence and control on the piano keyboard. Now, the great thing about this exercise, I think, is that you can use it kind of whatever level you're at. So even if you are literally on day one of playing the piano today, you can use this exercise, you can start learning it. But even if you're a more advanced and experienced player, there are ways of developing the exercise to make it more challenging and more kind of rewarding. OK, but we'll talk about those in a minute or two. First of all, let me play through the basic form of the exercise just in the right hand. You'll see this scored out on page three of the PDF. Here we go.
So as you can see, basically what we were doing was traveling up and down a C major scale. We started on middle C, we went to the C above middle C, and then we came down again. So let's dig into the basic pattern we were using there. If you look at the score on page 3, even if you're not a very advanced music reader yet, you should see that we're in 4-4 four, four time. Okay, So we've got 4 beats per bar, and the majority of the bars, the majority of the measures, have 8 notes in them. In this case, 8 eighth notes, or quavers. Let's just count. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And obviously, as you can hear, we have a repeated pattern. Let's just dig into how that pattern is actually working, because this is kind of the meat of the exercise, really. If you look at the first two notes in each of those bars, each of those measures, you'll see they have a little dot underneath. That means they're staccato. Staccato is really simple. It just means when you see a staccato note, you play it short and detached. That is staccato. Now, the remaining six notes in each of the bar, each of the bars that have the pattern in are played legato, which is kind of the opposite of staccato. It means you play smoothly. And I've indicated the legato in the score by using phrase marks, yeah, which are the, the kind of uh, curved lines underneath those six note patterns. You don't always get phrase marks when you're intended to play legato, okay? Composers don't always put them in, but I've put them in just to show you how the phrasing works. So in each individual measure, each individual bar, we've got something like this. So there's a little bit of contrast. Staccato, legato. Staccato, legato. And we're climbing up the scale and then down again. And we're doing that by missing a note in the scale. So we play the two staccato notes with our thumb to start with. And, but then instead of playing the D, which is the next note of the C major scale, we jump up with our second finger to the E. Play the legato section. And then we come to the D with our thumb for the next two staccato notes. Miss the E, miss the next note of the scale and so on until we get to the top of the scale. And then on the way down, it just reverses. So if you look at bar eight, we have a semi-breathe, a whole note, a full four beats, just to kind of catch our breath. And then we swap from playing the C with our thumb. We bring our fifth down and do the whole thing in reverse. And it's the same thing, but just kind of upside down. So this time we're playing the scale notes, we're kind of leading scale note in each bar, in each measure with our fifth, and we are coming down, missing a note, and hitting the next uh, the, the next note of the pattern with our fourth. That's a little bit more awkward than playing it with your thumb because those things are a little bit weaker. And one of the things this exercise does is help you to strengthen and, and focus on the um, focus on the control of those two fingers. Okay. Then right at the end, you'll see I've put a little pair of spectacles in the penultimate bar, that bar is slightly different to give us a, a, a kind of more satisfying ending. Yeah, So rather than following the pattern, it varies it, it slightly. We start on the D and we just kind of outline a G major chord, Yeah, if you know what one of those is. Come up to the D and finish with the R fourth on the C. What I want you to do to start with, especially if you're a relative beginner, is just kind of practice doing that in the right hand. What you're aiming to be able to do is play it against a solid beat. Don't try going too quickly to start with. In, in, in fact, this whole exercise shouldn't be played too quickly at all, even when you get to quite an advanced level. Really focus on the contrast between the staccato and the legato. Like I say in the PDF, one of the easy mistakes to make here is just to make the first note of each bar staccato and actually make the second note part the legato phrase. So I don't want to hear this. As you can hear, there the second note was really becoming part of the legato phrase. Each of those first two notes in each bar need to be clearly staccato. Each one clearly detached. Something else I want you to watch out for is your, and again, this is something that this exercise is designed to, to, to to help you practice, yeah? Watch your evenness and control. It's really easy. I was kind of exaggerating it there, um, but it's, it's really easy to kind of go thump, thump with your thumb. 
I don't want too much of that. What I want instead is um, a more kind of even sound. So on the way up, especially when you're using your thumb, maybe just pull back on it a little bit so it's quite not delicate exactly, but but so that it, it's not too contrasting with um, the, the legato section. It's really when you're playing, um, when you're starting to play the piano. In fact, when you've been doing it for a long time, it's really easy to hammer things too hard with your thumb. So take that thumb carefully. Yeah, you can also make quite an effort to make it musical. Give the phrases some shape. Yeah, that, again, that's something else that, the, that this exercise is designed to test you. The left hand version is, is pretty much the same, but just kind of upside down. So on the way up, we're using our fifth and our fourth. But on, and on the way down, we're using our thumb. Let me just play it through for you so you can see what's going on. I'm starting an octave lower. Okay, you might find the left hand a little bit more challenging because for most of us, being right-handed, the left hand is just a, a kind of a little bit lagging behind and also using the fifth and fourth on your left hand, they're probably going to be the weakest of all your fingers. So again, that left hand is really going to test you, especially if you're just starting out. Again, as with the right hand, just focus on getting it controlled, playing it against the beat, not too quickly, making sure that you're doing it accurately. Now, once you feel that you've got a grip on it in both hands, you can put the two hands together. But to make it more interesting and a tiny little bit more challenging, we're going to vary it a little bit here. Let me just play through the two-handed version. See if you can see what I'm doing differently in the right hand. Here we go. Did you spot what the difference was? Yeah? The right hand was a little bit higher than I played it when I was playing the two hands separately. So instead of starting the right hand on C, I was starting it on E. If you know a little bit of music theory, you'll know that that is a major third higher. Now, if you wanted to, you could quite easily just play, you know, the, 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 take the two separate hands exercises and put them together. But I've moved the right hand up a little bit so it sounds a bit nicer. Yeah, so you've got something a bit more musical to dig in, dig into, it's a bit more harmonious. And also it's just slightly more challenging. Once again, look at the penultimate bar where I've put that little pair of glasses to remind you because it is a little bit different to give us a satisfying ending. It just goes like this. Yeah, you'll probably find that a little bit more challenging. So once again, work through it, try and get it against a steady beat. Maybe try playing it against a metronome or a click track. Um, there are loads and loads of metronome apps out there. I really like Impulse, which is a really cool one, but um, you know, you might have a physical metronome. You can use a metronome in a door or whatever. Don't take it too quickly. Like I say in the PDF, I would say the absolute maximum tempo for doing this is about 130 beats a minute, yeah? And if it's slower than that, that is no big deal at all. Okay, so what do you do if you want to make it more challenging um, e even than that? I've put several suggestions in the PDF. Um, one of the easiest ways to make it actually quite a bit more difficult is just to change the key. Once you introduce black notes into this exercise, it starts to get really quite difficult. But try it in keys like F and G that just have a small number of black notes. So in F, it would be something like this. Just I'll, I'll just play a few iterations of the pattern.
can you see why it's more challenging? It's because that B flat is often falling on awkward fingers. So if we just look at the left hand, we've got this in the first bar. And, but then the second bar would be the G with our fifth to the B flat with our fourth. And then fourth bar is fifth on the B flat with a jump to the D. So that is actually really quite challenging and would, would need a little bit of um, practice and maybe playing around with even if you're quite an experienced piano player. But if you can work on that, that is a really, really good way of developing your skill and control. Once you're playing the black notes, don't be afraid to get up into the keyboard a little bit so, so you're a bit more secure on them. Try it in F, try it in G, but don't go really crazy. Try to make it as musical and expressive as you can because really that is what this exercise is all about. It's about developing your control control about making your playing more musical. Okay, so that's it. I hope you're on board with the Exercises, Inventions and Ideas project. Remember, if you want access to all of the instalments as they come out, just head over to patreon.com slash billhilton and sign up to support me. It doesn't cost very much and you get loads of great benefits. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, give me a shout down in the comments. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, give me a subscribe and also maybe check out some of my other products which you'll find linked in the description text down below. Okay, happy piano playing. I'll see you next time.